Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been so long since I've done a video. I've uh, just been completely snowed under recently, but I'm actually changing roles. Got a bit of spare time and I thought I'd catch up on a few videos I wanted to do. And most specifically is of uh, Let the Team Down from uh, What's New Videos in uh, Virilize Automation. Uh, and I'm going to cover two here, so 8.6 and 8.7. Now what's great is obviously the very fast and rapid release um, schedule for uh, the vRealize suite in general uh, means that you know that while they've done a lot of releases um, it, they're smaller in size so I'll combine these two and as usual just show what I think is the most important obviously there's a ton of bug fixes um, and other things in the background performance improvements etc uh, but you know I, I look from the customer point of view and things that I get asked for asked for and you know when they're gonna arrive and they're the ones I get excited about all right so let's start with uh, 8.6 .8 so I think one of the biggest things in 8.6 uh, was the uh, addition to add VCD as an endpoint so if you look here in the uh, cloud accounts uh, go to new cloud we can see we've got vcloud director endpoints now this was something that obviously was in 7 previously but it's a big thing for anyone with the VMware um, Cloud Provider program, uh, VCPP, uh, and there's a lot of organizations using Sovereign Clouds and other things that they offer their services up through VCD. So now, we, you know, this allows the organization to consume uh, their VMware-based cloud um, if, if, if it's being surfaced to them using VCD. Right, so that is by far the biggest one. I don't have a VCD account, so I haven't got anything connected, uh, but it's one of the most commonly asked for things is when that was gonna come. So for me, that was probably one of the biggest ones. All right, so I think the, the next one was the, in 8.6 was the addition of uh, TKGS. So being able to self-service TKGS clusters. Now self-service for what used to be called PKS, but then got changed to TKGI. Um, that was always there, but now we've got the ability to uh, deploy that. So while it wasn't great in 8.6, uh, it was refined and is a lot better in 8.7, right? And actually works very, very well. Uh, so that's where, if we have a look at, at Kubernetes endpoints, um, we can have a look at the supervisor clusters, we can add those in. Uh, and when we go to do a design, and just this example here, I'll look at the... TKGS out of the box solution here. And we can see there that we've got a Tanzu uh, cluster there. Um, I can then create the plans uh, and everything there and I can deploy that and that'll actually go and deploy in self-service uh, a TKGS cluster. So we can deploy this, we'll go Can't spell today, there we go. And we'll deploy that, so that'll go off. Uh, and just to let you, give you a look is, oh, I wish I had called these a bit better. These were just quick names, there we go, there's one there. We can see that's on, I can download the cube config file. Uh, and that particular one is VRA test. So if we come back into vCenter here, uh, we have a look at our things here. Uh, test, there it is. VRA test, and it's a two node basic plan cluster. And to set those up, uh, they're just done uh, within the uh, cluster plans here. And you can see I've already set up a small cluster plan. Uh, I can select my Kubernetes version, obviously the name. Um, now, I came across an issue where it didn't, while it let you have spaces, uh, it came with an issue that it wasn't an accepted thing when you went to deploy. So just a, a bit of a gotcha there that Try not to have spaces in there. It actually comes up telling you you haven't met a regex pattern. Um, so you look at the pattern, I go, oh, look, it doesn't include spaces. Uh, so fix that up. Um, choose your Kubernetes version that you want, uh, your control plane nodes and workers, how many, your machine class. So um, they're actually uh, part of the um, uh, within here. Uh, so if I look at... Uh, VM services here, so you can have a look at manage VM classes here, um, and you can see that I've only allowed those ones, but they're the ones that you can 
you know you can choose what people want to use and the storage class as well i'm just using default nothing specific and obviously for persistent volume claims i'm doing the same i'm just using the default storage class but again you know you can change all these based on your uh, environment that you want to do right um, and you can also customize the networking and stuff like that but i've just said inherit it right uh, and yeah and that's what you consume and that's what it deploys and hopefully if that one's hasn't um hasn't died on us we uh we should see it actually come up um at some stage uh to deploy so let's just have a quick look at our resources if it hasn't Error there. Oh, it's very test. Uh, it's failed. Why is it failed? Oh, my bad. My bad. I've hard coded the name. Yes. So there we go. Let's uh, let's change that to very test two, and we'll deploy that one. V2, there we go, there we go. Deploy that, and that should <laughs> now work. Uh, that's why you don't hard code anything. Now, uh, right, what's next? Um, obviously there was new, in 8.6, there was new salt modules for ESX, uh, vSphere, NSX, and VMC. So obviously you can do a lot more automation outside of VRA with salt, a lot more configuration management with salt, uh, on those endpoints, which is great. Um, and also the approval policies themselves. So if we um, have a look at approval policies, they actually now accept uh, AD groups, right? Um, which is obviously really important for the enterprise uh, users there. But if we, if we go in and have a look uh, at our policies, Nice approved policies. Cool. Uh, within here, we can actually add AD groups now. Um, so, which is good. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I think from 8.6, that was pretty much it. Like, there wasn't, there was a lot of stuff there, but nothing really called home. Like, there was things with um, being able to set Azure VM based NICs and stuff like that. And they're all great, uh, but they weren't real standout. Um, things for myself. Now I'll talk mostly about uh, 8.7. So 8.7 I think was a huge release. So one of the biggest things and something I can't really show I think was the ABX FAS engine update. So it's been given a complete overhaul. Um, it's faster, uh, it can run more in parallel, it's quicker to stand things up. And that was part of the problem and a lot of times is that you, you're using ABX it just takes forever um, to spin up the containers and do other things. Now it's so much faster uh, to to use. Uh, it's more efficient. Uh, each, I think, when you upgrade to 8.7, uh, if you have set custom memory limits, they've all been set back to default uh, because now the way it uses memory is a lot smarter. Uh, each run has its own memory space instead of being shared, etc. Et so it's, um, it's really good. Uh, so... The um, change in projects. Now, this is the this is probably my uh, my most favourite. So if we go if I go back to uh, Cloud Assembly, and that's pretty sad actually. I get excited about these things. Um, so say for example, I've uh, deployed this uh, this one. Well, they're just me smashing the keyboard to get a name to do it quickly. Uh, I can go. Um, okay, well maybe I want to change projects. And this is a very common thing, especially when you start doing proper project management and you go, okay, well, before things go into production, they're generally a project to be able to stand it up, make sure it works, test, validate, do all those sort of things. Um, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's waterfall, agile, it's, it's just the way uh, it works. And then once it's done and it's ready and it's deployed, it's then handed over to BAU or some sort of uh, sustainment group that will then manage it going forward right uh and being able to then do all that and hand over all the stuff uh within vra2 really awesome so we can go to you know this for instance and we can change project right so we're able to 
um, choose the project that we want to move it to. Uh, so, you know, once it's finished, we can change it through. Or maybe you've got your project set up in a dev test production type project manner. And as it moves through those stages, you can change it. And those projects may have different users, different permissions, different endpoints, those sort of things. Um, and, you, and you can also see that the, the quotas and policies here, it's giving you a warning um, saying that once it's moved, it, it's going to take take effect and affecting those um, those quotas and policies right so really awesome so not only now can you can you change owner uh, but you can change project um, and that I think has been long awaited uh, to do uh, now the next biggest thing uh, in this for me is uh, this which is uh, the salt config um, on the canvas so if we have a look what I'll do actually is I'll, uh, I'll bring two of these up just so we can see the differences so let's go uh, close this one I'll open up that one All right. so as we can see here we now got a salt config item for the for the um, canvas uh, and we'll see that down here. There's his salt config. Uh, we can we can pull that over. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, the, the same properties. So we've we've got the host, and obviously that's auto pre-filled when you connect it to the host. Um, you've got the master ID. You know, not too dissimilar from before. You got your state files that you want to run. So you can see I'm, I'm running, wanting to run two state files here. I've got my environment here, and I've got my variables that I want to pass in. Um, now they're, they're just for my testing purposes, but this allows you, you know, you can have these as drop downs, inputs, all the usual things that you might want to um, have available uh, to them. Basically, you could, you know, you could even have these as, as inputs uh, to be able to choose what you want as assigned or what, um, what applications you might want deployed, things like that. Um, and really, this, I guess, this is a bit, this, is, this isn't making the machine base less complicated. It also means that um, I can. Uh, run this semi independently. So if you look at how it was before the integration is that we had this in here, salt config. Now both of them will work in 8.7. You don't have to worry about, you know, having to change your things. It's just two, currently two different methods. Now there is something uh, that at the end of the day that's different at the moment with them. Uh, so we can see there, I've got the exact same information there, right? Um, essentially obviously ignore my remote access that's just there for quick uh, quick purposes uh, you won't hard code the the uh, password uh, into those um, but you still do need this remote access so that is um, the whatever details are passed into this uh, being it like I'm using username and password you can use certificate and stuff as well uh, whatever is passed in is what salt will use to connect to that machine right uh, so you can see they're pretty much identical just a different way to do it now when you um, do deploys this will deploy the salt minion uh, uh, as of 8.7 it deploys to Windows as well and you know we can we can hit the old deploy I don't think I've stuffed anything up on this yet uh, there it's all. Uh, but I have deployed one previously uh, let's no, 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 go to vSphere so it doesn't cost me anything. Uh, so we go back, oh, I'll go back there. We'll go back to our deployments. Uh, and I've actually uh, got one here. I wish I had named these properly. All right, so this is the standalone salt. You can see that's there. Um, uh, from here, you can actually look at the salt, salt config there. You can see which state files have been run, all the rest of it. Uh, from this salt, you can you know, you can have a look at the minions, the state files again, any of the variables that were passed in, uh, and custom properties. Uh, works great. Um, all the rest, we look at the, uh, we look at the other one. So if I go back and it will be this one. Yeah, that's the one. And you see, you got, you got the same stuff there, right? Um, what not, but one thing that's different is if we look at this one, which is the built with the not standalone salt, um, I've got a day two action uh, on these things and I can for instance go and apply a salt configuration right 
Uh, so this, you know, I can I can set the environment. I've only got two. I've got the list of state files I want to uh, want to log. Um, so you know, I'll do a git clone. There is so whatever variables, and I submit that. So you know, this just expands that ability to do day two things, adding additional software, doing health checks, anything that you want to do. Well, salt can pretty much do anything, um, but it gives you that really cool in, uh, integration. But if I go and use the standalone one, uh, and we look at uh, the standalone one here, uh, is that I actually don't have that capability yet. Right, so if I look at this, I've got no actions available. So using the standalone at this time doesn't give you that day two option uh, to be able to execute additional state files uh, if you if you you know uh, if you wanted to. So just bear that in mind. They both achieve the same thing at the moment. Uh, I I prefer this because it brings it in line to um, you know making Salt Ansible Puppet as first-class citizens, um, you know, their integration's the same. Uh, they're, you know, you get that choice. Obviously, you know, if you're using VRA, you've got, you already got salt, um, basically. So it's, well, why not use that? You get the better integration anyway um, uh, from a, having it as a whole platform. But at the end of the day, you know, having each of the configuration management tools being used and executed in the same way, I think is, is better rather than having it all mushed into the machine properties, right? So anyway, that's I think that's really cool. Um, now, there's a great thing, there was API, uh, there's a, a new API for the custom external validation, uh, which is really cool, um, something to keep in mind and use. As uh, 8.7, you'll see there is no marketplace anymore. So that's been deprecated, the integration there. Honestly, I don't know anyone who actually used the marketplace um, integration for the on-prem. I believe it's still there um, from a, a VMware cloud service. You can still have a marketplace there, uh, which sort of makes more sense. But yeah, that uh, that marketplace is no longer there. The TKJS clusters, as I mentioned previously in 8.6, has been massively improved. Um, it actually works a lot better now. Um, I haven't had it fail uh, since the update. Uh, before, it was a bit funny getting properties sometimes when you're trying to create a cluster uh, it was a cluster plans it wasn't getting the storage properties it was just a few little issues there in and I think it was more of an experimental feature in uh, uh, 8.6 but it, as of 8.7 it's it's been relatively good and hopefully if I go back to the deployments that one hasn't failed again yay look at that so that's worked and if we go back here we'll see there it is test v2 it's deployed a kubernetes cluster there uh, which is awesome, right? So it just shows you really that that nice integration of a whole platform uh, with VMware, with vSphere, with Kubernetes, with VRA, with Salt, doing all that. Now, one of the big things that again I don't I don't have this set up, but I think it's really important, especially from an automation point of view and from a you know especially that, that those large enterprises is Salt with the SecOps module. So Salt SecOps is really really cool. Um, it's now fully. It's now can be fully integrated um, with uh, Carbon Black Cloud workload. So what that gives you, and what this is, what I think is really cool, is the ability to have that. You know, uh, and this is this is the thing that VRA does better than anything else, right? Is that governance and day two. And when you got a large enterprise environment with thousands and thousands of applications, multiple different users, uh, multiple different skill sets, you want to be able to put that enterprise governance around to make sure that as a business you get the most efficient use out of your uh, your compute, whether it's cloud on prem doesn't matter, but also to make that operational day two stuff easy. Right, and this is where the you know adding those additional things like salt for configuration management, but then also you know that that's cool. I deploy something, um, I know that I've applied my config files, everything's as it should be. I know that it's gone through the approval policies and resource policies and everything else that I've put together there. Uh, and you know, as a as a day one, it's all healthy and great. But what about when it you know? day 50, day 100, how am I managing that going forward? And this is where having that SecOps portion 
um, of salt in there with the integration with carbon black cloud is not only it's able to do the detect and remediate in a closed loop fashion um, uh, for you right so it's able to do automation based on uh, the detection of threats um, which I think is really cool, right? It's it, it's upping that self-driving data center uh, concept. It's being able to um, it's being able to actually set and forget uh, to a degree. Obviously, you still always need to have a have an eye over those sort of things. But being able to have that, you know, everything from that, you know, that initial day that you deploy it right through to when you decommission it, that you know that it's meeting all your security policies and if a threat does happen to pop up that the automation of what you've set around a policy is it'll automatically remediate or automatically kick it off the network or it'll do some whatever you want it to do um, having that that full proper platform to run your environment in um, just makes things so much easier right so that 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 to me was uh I really want to get my hands on that. I haven't got an account in Carbon Black Cloud yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, testing that out. But really, at the end of the day, I think that's that's pretty much it. Obviously, again, a uh, heap of bug fixes, heap of performance improvements, um, a heap of additional things in cloud, like um, you know, being able to do additional disk properties and NIC properties and all these sort of things. So with every one of these releases, there's always those little bits and pieces for AWS, GCP, Azure, those sort of things. Um, but to me, the ones that I've listed, I think were the, the, the biggest hitters uh, as of features and functionality uh, that have come into the products. And I'm really looking forward to 8.8 and I actually think that's out coming out soon. So um, stay tuned for that one. Stay safe out there. I'll see you next time. Bye.